Now, let me bring in Senator Paul Scar, who's a Liberal National Party Senator for Queensland and who is Deputy Chair of the Legal and Constitutional Affairs References Committee. Thank you so much for joining me, Senator Scar. It's a real honour to have you on the show. Great to be with you, Amanda. Tell me, is the factual basis upon which Attorney General Dreyfus says we need to have this reform of the AAT solid, is it really there? Absolutely not. As, as you've said in your introduction, the objective evidence actually disproves what Dreyfus is claiming. So from my perspective, one of the best indications of whether or not the AAT is doing its job is whether or not courts are overturning decisions of the AAT. And as you said, less than one in 50 decisions the AAT are being overturned. So from my perspective, this is a tribunal that's doing its job. You've just come out of Senate estimates, and as I understand it, you probe pretty deeply about the performance of the AAT. What did you find in your questioning? Well, it was absolutely startling. So I actually went to the AAT annual report, which has the objective evidence with respect to the performance of the AAT, and the minister's at the table, and I'm saying to the minister, well, Less than one in 50 decisions of the AAT are overturned. There's a very large satisfaction rate with the performance of the AAT, mm. and that's both from parties who are appearing in the AAT and their legal representatives. So I asked the Minister at the table, what evidence is the Attorney-General acting upon with his decision to overturn, to undertake this huge so-called reform process? <laughs> what do you say? And, and the Minister at the table says, well, the Attorney-General gets around the community, he talks to people in the community. Wouldn't we expect, if there's one minister in a, in a government, that we would expect to act on objective evidence? Surely it's the Attorney-General, but we're seeing the contrary here. And, in fact, all the statistics from that annual report and the statistics that have been pulled out for um, the purposes of my editorial earlier, they all show an AAT that's actually kicking goals at a rate much higher than it has, say, a decade ago. Absolutely. So all the statistics you look at, the objective evidence is showing, in fact, the performance of the AAT is improving over time. So the last thing you would do if you were acting on objective evidence and if this wasn't about a political witch hunt, the last thing you would do is dismantle the AAT and replace it with something else. It's really interesting to observe, isn't it? How many parallels do you see with Labor's past efforts to shut down and reconstitute bodies to give them greater scope and opportunity to control the personnel and form of government departments so that they can control our institutions? Well, as, as you said in your editorial, they're just rolling out the same model. So if you don't like the people who are on the, on the tribunal, disregard their performance, which is excellent, and just set up another tribunal, another organisation. So they're applying exactly the same model they've applied in the past. There's an interesting um, sort of self-reinforcing risk in this too. By having this independent, so-called, mm. um, panel of lawyers to do recruitment, um, you run the real risk that the only people who are going to be qualified to do jobs are people who have done this job before in the past, mm. creating a real sort of stagnation in mm. the, the personnel that come mm. into the organisation. Mm. Mm. A stagnant bureaucracy can mm. start to have problems mm. of its own. Mm. Um, what ways or what mechanisms can be put in mm. place in reform to make sure mm. that there is that freshness mm. yep. and there isn't... Um, you know, a, an entrenched bureaucracy yeah. running counter or interference yeah. to government. Amanda, I think the point you made about the importance of bringing in non-lawyers onto this tribunal is extremely well made. A lot of the decisions which are being made, and you've given the examples in terms of disability services, social security decisions, migration decisions, what we want on this tribunal are people with real-world experience. Mm. And the cases that I see in my office... Of, of people coming uh, to my office who've gone through the process, it is so important you've got people who can draw out the evidence, draw out those stories and make decisions on the facts because this is merits review, as you said. Mm. It's not a legal decision per se, it's merits review. So you've got to get people's stories and understand the context. Well, Senator Scar, I'm really glad you're on the case. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much.